Friends are like old memories. They always remind you of your past. And we are reminding ourselves of the past episodes from this week of Good Company for the best of Good Company with me, Holly Taylor. I'm Holly Taylor, and、uh, an aunt of mine retired, and her husband retired recently. And she's like, it's not retired, it's refired.、Uh, she is so excited for this next chapter of her life. And it turns out she is not in the minority on this one. There's kind of like a Benjamin Button effect happening with those who are hitting retirement ages between now and those who are planning to retire in about 20, 29 or so.、Um, they're actually feeling more vivacious than ever, according to a recent study that was done in the US. 60% of respondents are planning for or have already implemented a retirement reinvention. And so some of them are picking up an old hobby or at least plan to.、Um, about 33%. Believe retirement will be their time to learn a new skill. Some are getting into sports, others are becoming writers, learning new languages, traveling. So it's pretty cool to see how people are reframing retirement and living their best life. How about you? Is retirement on your horizon? Are you planning for it? Are you living your best life in retirement right now? And, and what are you doing to reframe retirement? Text in 905 338 I'm Holly Taylor, and I wish we had a, like, a live cam or something in here because off air conversations are always exciting. As I brought up, Just that story of wildlife and the strength of wildlife to, to human beings. And so I've, I've decided to dub this a new segment, maybe one time, one time only. Weird Wednesdays. Producer Mike, what weird thing did you see recently about wildlife and animals? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching National Geographic Channel over this past weekend. Ladies, he's still single. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> did you know that you can perform surgery on a fish? I did not. Yeah, and I don't mean like a shark or something sizable. I mean like a goldfish. That's wild. Yeah, so I was watching this veterinary show,、mm -hmm. and the guy was at a university somewhere in Alabama、yeah. showing the students how to anesthetize a fish. Ooh. Which involves putting the medicine into a tank and then just put the fish in the tank and he absorbs the. Yeah. I, I don't know how that works, but. Science. Put the fish to sleep, perform the surgery, put the fish back in another tank. And much like a fisherman, when he puts his catch back into the lake, you know,、yeah. you sort of like wave it back and forth, get the water going through the gills, and then he wakes up again. Wow. Yeah. That's actually pretty fascinating. It is. <laughs> Weird, but fascinating. Who knew? I'm Holly Taylor, and today is National Be Late for Something Day. Yes, please. I do not need a day for this. <laughs> you can talk to producer Mike over there.、Ah. How often am I on time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can actually answer it if you want to. I, I won't fire you. Oh,、uh, I know that you're going to be roughly 10 to 15 minutes after when you say you're going to be. Yeah. It's a miracle we can pull off a radio show consistently、uh, at all. Right? <laughs> That's because my clock is 15 minutes fast. <laughs> You know what I used to do with my mom when I was growing up? I'd roll her clock forward in her car. Yeah. <laughs> so that she'd be on time for things. Yes. It was about the same delay, about 15 minutes. You know, I think it was Aubrey Hepburn, maybe? She said you have to come to things fashionably late, 15 minutes. Okay. And <laughs> it's just for fashion's sake, isn't it? Well, you know, it's only fashionably late, yeah, not yeah. too late, just 15 minutes or so. <laughs> I also have this thing where I don't like being on time because if no one else is there, I feel really awkward and uncomfortable. So I just show up a little later and it's turned into a bit of a habit. So don't judge me. God's not done with me yet.、Um, but you may know Johnny Rocket. He is always 15 minutes early for everything. How are we friends? I do not know. So this is my question for you today. Are you one that's typically 15 minutes early? Or 15 minutes late. Because if you're on time, you know you're late. I'm Holly Taylor. We're talking about today being、uh, National Be Late for Something Day. And for me, that's actually、um, not a challenge. <laughs> 905 338 Are you 15 minutes early or 15 minutes late to the party in general? Text in, let me know. Lisa says, I'm about 15 minutes late, like you, Holly. I get social anxiety if I'm there. No one else is. I like to hide, sneak on in. Totally get that. Thank you for, for not judging me today and, and understanding where I'm coming from. 
because we have Harry over here saying that he's like Johnny. He's 15 minutes early for everything. And yes, his dad used to always tell him, if you're on time, you're late. Oh, I I feel like I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Because all these teachers telling me to be on time. Producer Mike, you're generally on time. You're not really early or late. No, but once upon a time, I was really bad with uh, arriving to work on time. I remember getting in trouble when I was a mechanic. Hey, you're supposed to be here when the shop opens. And I'd be like 15 minutes late. Yeah. Yeah. Just not a good look. It's not. I mean, I... Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know, I know. I just, you know, it's like island time. You know, the fact that it's only 15 minutes. Really, you're welcome. (laughs) I get it. Yeah, if you don't have anybody waiting on you. Yeah, exactly. I have anxiety about people waiting on me, so that's generally why I'm early. And I have that as well. So this is just part of my problem. (laughs) I'm anxious and I'm headed in late because I didn't plan my time properly. Uh, I just, you know what? This is just my life for now. For now. Um, sometimes I am on time and that just, uh, uh, I just feel like I won, I won a big prize or something. I'm Holly Taylor and I don't know if you've been watching and following along with the Paralympics, but man, Canadians are doing so well. We are not in the top 10, but pretty close to it. And every single athlete that is there honestly deserves cheering and celebration as the things they've overcome. For example, I'm sure by now you've heard of the story of the young man, 24 years young now, Jacob Wasserman, who was... Six years ago, in that tragic bus accident, as he was a member of the Humble Broncos. And so there he is now, six years later, competing for Canada as a para rower. From Regina, it's been incredible seeing his journey now competing on an international stage and hopefully encouraging others just with his ability to overcome such a tragic event. Not everyone has tragic events that are part of their story and that doesn't matter. It's not about which tragedy is worse than the other, but it's about the things that we are able to overcome. And sometimes we feel like things are insurmountable, but Like we say, with God, we can. So it's just amazing to see um, Jacob now at the Paralympics and we'll be cheering him on.